this talk on uh, Funk Whale and uh, the importance of decentralized podcasting. Um, it's just something that um, I'm doing as, as just a little outreach thing. Um, <laughs> so who am I? Uh, my name is Kieran Ainsworth. I am a um, member of the Funk Whale Association, um, who are the um, arbiters of the Funkwell platform. We have been developing it uh, for a few years now. Uh, I joined uh, Funkwell a couple of years ago as uh, primarily a documentation writer. So I installed uh, Funkwell uh, after looking for some self-hosting tools and I approached the project and said, uh, I, your documentation isn't particularly great. Uh, would you mind if I, if I helped rewrite it? And from there on, I've kind of got more and more involved in different bits of the project. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of work with um, uh, front-end development, documentation, uh, community management. And uh, my role on the sort of board is that I'm a member of the steering committee, which means that I am responsible for helping with development of roadmaps um, and sort of research and development into different features that we might want to add. Uh, at some other time. So what is Funkwell first and foremost? Um, as you can see there, very nice little uh, sort of interface design. Uh, Funkwell is essentially a music and audio platform, um, to put it very, very basically. Um, but more specifically, it is um, a free and open source project um, it's a self-hosted server uh, software with a um, front-end web application for playing music. And uh, the thing that kind of sets it apart is that it is uh, federated. So it's built on the same uh, software as other uh, federated um, applications such as Mastodon, Plarima, PixelFed, PeerTube, Realtobits, and all the, the others. Uh, we all use the same um, software to interact with one another, uh, something called the ActivityPub protocol. Um, and basically, it just allows us to uh, be a bit more interactive with um, other Funkwell servers and also other um, software in the Fediverse. And when Funkwell started up, it was primarily focused around music. Um, the name comes from the fact that the original developer uh, of the software, uh, Agathe Berriot, wanted a free self-hosted version of GrooveShark, something that um, she could put music into and then create playlists and radios from. Um, so that's kind of where the pedigree came, to, came from. We, we come from that music background. Um, but nowadays we're focused on many things. Music collections are still part of it, but we also have uh, audio publication tooling uh, and content sharing as part of our sort of genetic makeup. So a little while ago, um, we were looking at our roadmap. So around about um, September, October 2019, we started to look seriously at where did we want to take the project? At the time, we had just moved away from having Agat as essentially the benevol benevolent dictator for life, and we're looking at moving towards a more democratic system of governance where we would ask the uh, users to provide us with insights and um, sort of guidance on what they would like to see in the platform. And when we started uh, approaching them with options, one of the things we found was that podcasting was a very, very widely requested feature, um, which was something I don't necessarily think we were expecting, um, but it was definitely something that people were very interested in. Uh, at the time, uh, the Fediverse in general lacked a, um, lacked a proper sort of... Um, platform for things like podcasting. We had music, we had, um, so I'm just going to adjust my volume, somebody's saying it's a little bit low. 
um, we had uh, music, we had video, we had um, things like microblogging, and we had image sharing, but we didn't have podcasting. So that was something that people seemed to be quite interested in. So when people came to us um, and sort of suggested that, that fitted in quite nicely with another thing that we were looking to do in general, which was um, content publication. So we sort of looked at it as an opportunity to develop um, an entire new structure, not just around podcasts, but also around music publication. So that we were moving away from um, just hosting your CD collection um, and, and maybe some bits and pieces that you had done yourself to um, actually publishing um, the content and putting it through to the Fediverse directly. So that was kind of uh, the background as to why we got into podcasting in general. Um, very quickly, uh, we saw that there were going to be a lot of challenges with this particular bit of work. The biggest one really was um, we as a as a collective didn't really know all that much around uh, podcasting. Um, none of us were podcasters. Um, we listened to podcasts sometimes, but not very often. I myself only listened to a few. Um, so we very so quickly realized that we were going to need to approach people who did this sort of thing all the time. We were going to need to ask people who knew about this stuff, had sort of uh, experience working with lots of different bits and pieces uh, in the current climate uh, in order to build something that fit with their expectations and also addressed some of their frustrations, that, you know, anything, that, anything that frustrated them. The other problem was, as I mentioned before, we are a music publication platform or we were a music uh, sort of hosting platform. So this podcasting and publication stuff was not in our DNA. It required quite a lot of um, sort of architecting on the back end to really get something that would work for publication. Um, we needed to kind of rethink a lot of things because we'd been making assumptions about audio in general um, based on music collections, uh, which of course is a very different thing to, to podcasting. Um, the other thing we didn't really know or understand was what should it look like from beginning to end uh, for a podcaster to publish something? Um, we kind of understood it for musicians. Um, it was a bit simpler. You know, you'd have albums and you would have tracks that go in those albums. But we didn't really know all that much about uh, podcasting. So in order to get that information, we decided to form a uh, podcasting uh, task force, as it were. And this task force basically consisted of um, members of the Funkwell Association and a group of people from the um, podcasting subreddit, uh, from the Fediverse, um, people who made podcasts all the time. Um, and we basically brought them all into a chat room and we said, okay, so if we're going to design this, what do we absolutely need to do? What, what do we need to hit? Um, what do you want to see? And what would um, kind of encourage you to come over to using our software to publish your podcast, if, if that's something you would like to do. Um, and it was something, uh, the other thing we needed to work out was, um, you know, we didn't really have an insight as people who didn't publish into what the competition was doing. So I say the competition, <laughs> what other people who made this stuff were doing. Um, so we very much needed to get that information from a first-hand experience. Um, and, and sort of pull that in to make sure that we were doing it correctly. And what we found was um, basically podcasts are hard. Uh, they're quite complex uh, things where especially the, um, particularly the, the complexity exists on the back end. It exists within the software, but the user should be really getting a very simple uh, front end to do things with. So we found that basically, whereas with music, um, Funkwell really didn't handle a lot of the more complex stuff like tagging. Um, we let music brains handle that. 
if we were going to be publishing, we needed to start actually taking on board that complexity and sort of facilitating it in our publication layer. Uh, and podcasts, of course, offered um, a slightly different way of doing things because there was less metadata to be included um, and, and it was less sort of catalogued than something like music. The other thing that was very, very strongly put forward by the people who we talked to was that there are there exist in the podcasting world standards. We have certain ways of doing things and that has to be retained no matter which tool we use. So for example, um, we need to use RSS. We absolutely have to include an RSS feed. Um, Images need to be correctly sized. The RSS feed must be consumable by tools such as iTunes um, and uh, Apple Podcasts, which means we have to include certain fields that only exist for iTunes and Apple Podcasts. Um, the other thing we kind of came to realize was that people were going to be using us as a podcast publication tool, but we also needed to act as the podcatcher. Because our you know, our sort of um, current makeup at the time was to be a music hosting tool, but also an application which played music. We needed to give that same experience for podcasts. It needed to be that people could publish content, but also take the content they already liked and put it into Funkwell. Um, and then the other, the last sort of big thing that came from this was the sudden realization that um, if you're going to have two or more servers talking to each other a lot more, um, you're going to need to really strengthen the uh, moderation tools that you have in place. Especially when we're talking about user-generated content, the scope for abuse on that is quite significant. So we needed to give users tools to be able to report things. We needed to give people tools to be able to block certain stuff. We needed to give administrators the ability to use things like enable lists so that they could prevent federation with certain um, other platforms. Um, and we needed to give them the ability to sort of ban users, take down channels, that sort of thing. Um, so this was a whole lot of architectural design for um, podcasts, which, you know, it was, it was really the podcasts that drove us to it. Um, and what we came out with was basically um, a hybrid of a traditional sort of podcast overview and a Fediverse channel. So in our world, we have podcasting channels uh, and music channels. And from what you can see in that sort of screenshot, it gives some sort of basic information. You get your artwork, you get your uh, episodes. We can split things up into series, which was a big request that people had was the ability to create uh, different series within the same channel. Um, we have the ability to subscribe, um, which I'll go on to in a second. And obviously, if you're the channel owner, upload new content to make sure everything is working uh, as expected. Um, the important bit here that we have is the um, information about what's in that channel. So in, in this channel, this is mine. Ignore it. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> but there's one episode and it's been listened to 13 times. And this was important information that we, we sort of worked out was needed in order for people to get a, a grip on like how are people interacting with my content. Um, but taking that on board, we went ahead with the subscription capabilities. And as you can see in the screenshot, we have kind of three options in every case. The first is if you already have a uh, Funkwell account, you can subscribe using your Funkwell account to that channel. And it will be, it will be one of those um, things that appears in your feed when a new uh, episode is uploaded, you'll get notified that there's a new episode in the front end. Um, the other thing you can do is subscribe via RSS. So going back to what we were saying earlier, um, we took a lot of we put a lot of effort into making sure that our RSS feed um, was compatible as as much as possible, and that anybody could go onto a, a sort of an open Funkwell channel and subscribe without having to sign up to Funkwell, because one of the things we very quickly realized was we we don't want people to feel like they have to sign up. We, we want people to be able to enjoy the content no matter what. And that really should be up to them where they listen to us, whether they listen to us on Funkwell or some other podcatcher. 
And the last one is um, subscription via the Fediverse. So that enables users to follow a channel in much the same way that they would follow a, a Mastodon account or a Plerimer account or something similar. So we're trying to hit all sort of boxes there of how you can keep up with somebody's content. The other thing that uh, I, I've been doing some work on recently is more front end stuff, but um, it's just making sure that we sort of point people towards um, adding new content where possible, either by themselves, um, creating new channels or subscribing to things uh, via RSS or via the Fediverse. So really pushing people towards that more, um, it was really pushing people towards that more sort of, um, you know, creation element. We want people to create. So that's with the basics in place. Um, this was the development work we did uh, over the past sort of year or so. Uh, it's been it's been a wild ride. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of content that's gone in, a lot of changes made. Um, there's still some changes to come. The most uh, the current release doesn't have some of the newer tools that are around uh, podcasting, such as dedicated podcast searching um, and sort of uh, wider accessibility of um, subscription tools. Um, but we're not finished. There are still things, there are still items on the roadmap that we would like to complete and still items that are not currently on the roadmap, which may need to be added in future. Uh, to really help us to get involved with podcasting more because what we found is this is a uh, this is a market that we very much uh, have enjoyed working in and um, it's one that actually has proven quite popular with people you know people see Funkwell as a podcasting platform now um, even if you know they, it was originally supposed to be music this is how it's kind of evolved so what do we have um, to kind of consider next to take Funkwell to the next sort of level of, um, you know, being a proper sort of um, alternative to what's currently out there? Um, the first thing that, that strikes me uh, as necessary is um, Funkwell currently allows you to import RSS feeds ex from external podcasts. It currently allows you to follow um, podcasts on the Fediverse, on, on um, Funkwell, and it currently allows you to publish your own. But what we don't have at the moment is any way of finding external podcasts. You still have to leave Funkwell to go and find uh, the RSS feed that you're looking for. Um, you still have to, you know, go and see where um, things are, go and find them on something like iTunes or Feed or Spotify and grab the RSS feed and bring it back to Funkwell, which of course from a user experience point of view it is not great. Um, it, it's it's basically meaning that Funkwell is not yet the one-stop shop for a podcast that we might want it to be. Um, so one of the things that I would quite like to see, you know, come in in future is a podcast discovery for an external storefront. Uh, I have built myself a... Um, a kind of proof of concept of how we might do this using the iTunes API, but uh, there are different um, things out there such as feed and, and others that we might want to consider looking at. Um, the other thing is, is an improved sort of uh, publication workflow. At the moment, uh, the publication workflow, uh, it works, it, 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 things go in, you get, um, you get a podcast out of it, it generates an RSS feed for you, but we have had uh, people raise uh, issues with it, um, specifically around um, how do I edit metadata during that upload process. Um, the problem, I think, is because of the way we designed the front end, it was more of a, it was more in line with how we'd worked with music previously, which is to say, upload many files which have been previously tagged, and just kind of let them be. Um, whereas, of course, if you're doing an upload of, of podcasts, you want to basically upload an episode, title it, tag it, put some artwork with it, give it a license, do all of that stuff, um, and then move on to the next one. Or if you know you're going to be uploading multiple episodes of a series, you might want to have a tool, say, that you can you put them all in a series and say, number them automatically. 
Um, at the moment, we don't have that. You, if you upload multiple things, a pencil icon appears next to each one, and you can click through them and edit them all, but it's not very obvious how you do that. So that's been raised as something um, that needs to be addressed. And we've had some designs submitted for how we might go about doing that, which looks to be a lot better. Um, the other one is something I'm going to come on to in the sort of the second part of this, and that is the introduction of links to donation services. Um, at the moment, hosting your podcast on Funquail is is uh, is great, um, but it's the same as hosting it anywhere else. Um, what we need to uh, what we sort of want to be sort of pushing people towards or sort of encouraging is this idea of supporting uh, people who create. Um, and the best way to do that in our in our eyes is to kind of uh, promote the idea of donation services and promote the idea of helping uh, to support the podcast that you like. Um, we don't want to be a payment handler, obviously, we wouldn't, but we do want to sort of uh, help make it a lot more visible when there is a service that you can actually put money towards. And the last one, it's been on the roadmap since channels were introduced. It's very, very complex. Um, as, as somebody who does not work on the back end, I don't really have the technolo technological no knowledge to go into it. But there is this idea of channel claiming where if somebody uh, uploads some music to a channel and it's not their music, the person whose music it is should be able to claim that channel and take control of it. Um, as you can imagine, that's a very, very complex thing to do, particularly over federation um, because you have all of the different implications of the wider fediverse to take into account there um, so it's our biggest boon it's also our biggest um, challenge day to day is working with that federation but that moves on to moves me on to my next point which is all about sort of decentralized podcasting um, this may seem like a strange concept to people who do podcasting because uh, podcasts are decentralized by design, really. Um, I didn't know a lot about podcasts going into this. As I say, it was a very much a learning experience. Um, but the more reading I did into podcasts as part of the research that we did for this, the more fascinated I became by how they work and how they're set up. And... The thing that struck me was um, podcasts have this, uh, you, they occupy this unique space of being very, very uh, disruptive, low tech, um, you know, certainly audio podcasts, uh, but video podcasts as well, sort of disruptive, low tech, standards compliant ways of communicating a lot of information. So uh, podcasts can be hosted anywhere. Uh, as long as they generate a valid feed, anybody can capture them into a podcatcher and play the files linked using a relevant um, piece of software. Um, that means that the, the potential listener base is enormous, uh, much more so than you know, anything based on um, you know, a, a single platform, a centralized platform. And this was one of the reasons that when we were designing uh, the podcast publications tools, we were so emphatic about being a part of that existing infrastructure, making sure that we didn't try to sort of lock people into our way of thinking, but instead follow what podcasting was already doing because it already seemed pretty great. We had, you know, things like RSS feeds. Um, we had sort of good... Um, encodings being used like mp3 uh, which can be so widely used it's 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 kind of ubiquitous at this point um and and that's kind of a a really important part of it and the reason that this came to my attention was during some of the conversations we were having with podcasters uh and specifically when we were looking at um funkwell as a podcatcher uh, so something that consumes RSS feeds and plays them back. Um, somebody had said something about a specific podcast. I think it was called the, the Last Podcast on the Left. And they said, basically, it's a shame. I won't be able to play this through Funkwell because they are going Spotify exclusive. And so they're not producing an RSS feed anymore. And this worries me slightly. Um, 
it, it's it's a concerning kind of uh, tr- trend away from what podcasts stand for, from 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 uh, my understanding of what podcasts stand for. Um, because when you go exclusive to something like Spotify, you have the introduction of DRM and sort of um, you're sort of creating a walled garden around content. And certainly for content that used to be free and, and open, so you know it used to follow the same rules as everything else, for it to suddenly go into a, a platform specific um, publication is a big break. And there are a couple of reasons for this, but the primary one is, let's say that with podcasting, the only limitation for a user is that they have a machine that has software that is capable of of listening to that podcast. It's capable of reading the feed and playing back the the audio. That's your limitation. If you put it onto uh, something like Spotify, you actually divide this into four, four different experiences. The first two are users who live in a country that have access to Spotify. Um, And those people will have two experiences. One, they will either listen to an ad supported um, uh, version of the show. And the second one is that they pay for a um, a subscription to the um, the actual podcast. Uh, uh, Sorry, to the actual um, uh, platform. Then you have people who go into other, or live in other countries, um, which don't have Spotify served up to them. And those people have uh, more experiences. One is that they have to pay for a VPN and uh, basically access Spotify externally using the ads. And then again, access externally using a subscription. And then there's that lost fifth one, which is they don't have the money for any of this, so they can't listen. So we fractured the user base by centralizing the, um, uh, they, by centralizing the content into a certain place. And the problem with something like Spotify is at that point, when you've done that and you've taken that sort of, um, you've taken that decentralized nature away, what you have left is not a podcast. It's essentially corporate radio. And like I say, for something that started off as a podcast, there's something that started off freely available having it move in that way is somewhat concerning. But at the same time, we have to look at why does that happen? And generally the answer is podcasting is expensive. Um, Everything that takes up people's time is expensive. And podcasting from the little I have done of it is very expensive. You've got to take the time to script and record and edit and work with, um, you know, all of that audio and video. You've got to find a place to publish it. You've got to do all of the, um, you know, promotion around it. And if you are looking to make money off of it, you have to search around for, uh, you know, sponsorships and, and ad deals and things like that. So when a company like Spotify comes along and says, we'll take all of that complexity off of your hands, we'll give you a good portion of money um, to pay your staff and to, to make, make sure you can make a living, it's very, very tempting. Um, and you can kind of understand why it happens. And one of the things that we kind of found was that um, the free software community in general is not always best equipped to deal with that kind of thing. We don't, um, we can't make a counter offer to that. Um, our weapon here and what we can do about this is, as I've said before, kind of try as much as possible to make it easy for people to make the decision to continue listening outside of those platforms, make it easy for them to continue to support their, um, their favorite podcast directly. Um, which means lowering the sort of barrier to entry for um, payments, lowering the barrier of entry for sharing, for supporting, for for getting things out there. Um, But it's an inherently sort of difficult thing to to come up against and something that, you know, we haven't found the answer for yet. Um, It's something we've done discussions about. Um, how we how we might help podcasters support themselves, how we might help uh, people support podcasters uh, and musicians as well. This this stretches to all areas. 
Um, but the answer is 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 a difficult one. It's not one that sort of um, you know comes very easily. Um, now I've purposefully sort of left this. I think I've got it exactly half an hour. That's good. Um, I purposefully didn't want this to go on for too long. Um, it's it. That's kind of the journey that we've had. Um, the first thing is podcasting is fun uh, from a sort of user perspective podcasts are wonderful to listen to um having a good place to put podcasts is great for um you know people who make them from a software perspective uh they're a bit of a nightmare especially when they aren't what your um (laughs) software was originally sort of um set up to do uh there's a lot of work goes into it it's um i think it's underestimated in general um but you know it's worth putting the effort in to to get something like that um free software world the open source software world um we we still face some significant challenges um with assisting people with things like anything to do anything to do with finances is something where we struggle and um it's because we don't have that monolithic approach it's because we don't have that um central financing Um, So it tends to be that, you know, we need to focus more on improving uh, the experience of working within a sort of direct donation world and a direct sort of um, way of of working. Um, And yeah, this this whole sort of trend of existing podcasts being picked up by um, companies and you know, things that used to be so free and easily accessible becoming walled off inside. I only know of Spotify doing it, but I can imagine the same thing happening with Apple Music and Deezer and a lot of others um, is kind of a concerning move, which is diluting what was really quite a fantastic sort of idea. And it's a shame that it happens to some of the ones that people find, you know, people connect with the most strongly. I think um, two of the most popular podcasts that have been picked up are things like um, uh, Joe Rogan and and the last podcast on the left, which is, it's a shame um, because high profile things being taken over has meaning and, um, you know, it will normalize it in, in my eyes at least. But with the use of free free software tools, with the use of you know these open standards, real podcasting will never go away. It will always you know bubble up underneath. We will always see people um, continuing to you know to put things out. So yeah, it's it's not all hopeless. This wasn't what that talk, this talk was about. It was more just about this is something I think is very important and something that you know as a project we're really striving to support. Um, so I think that takes me to, well, quite nicely 35 minutes, which is exactly what I was aiming for. If anybody has any questions, um, I think that the um, I think that the uh, I think that the number has been put into the chat. Um, it's plus four nine five three six one uh, eight nine zero two eight six eight zero zero one. Uh, and if you're using event phone, it's just 8001. Um, I'll just have a look and see if anyone asked any questions in here. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, how do I find, how can I find a Funquell instance for a podcast I'm planning that suits me, my needs and my content the best? Um, yeah, so the link there is is a good idea. The uh, get started guide, um, we actually have a, um, a sort of a, pod picker we call it um which is uh, just something that sort of takes you through the summary of different pods um which is what we ref- how we refer to servers um people can write a summary of what sort of content they want on there um the two biggest servers um are open.audio and um uh, i think tanuki tunes which is my server is quite sort of uh, big and open um there are lots of servers out there so you know if you find one where you think it would fit in here <laughs> yeah, then great um you know usually just find one that has open registrations and, and sign up or if you're feeling brave um install it for yourself uh, it's it's a fairly easy install there are some hosts that will host it for you um 
they're listed on the Funkwell.audio website. So if you just wanted somebody to set it up for you so that you could host a podcast, um, then yes, you could sort of uh, put it in there. Uh, do you know the podcast index.org project? Uh, I don't personally. Uh, I will look it up after this. That looks interesting. Uh, if there's a solution that is to be found that could work for podcasters, could it also be applicable to indie musicians? Or are the two fields uh, way too different in order to accommodate both? Uh, I'll just finish this one. I think I've got a uh, telephone person coming in. Uh, so, uh, if there's... I mean, yes and no. If we're talking about supporting um, financially, then yes, in theory, we already have some of those. I mean, there are already donation platforms which kind of work for a multitude of things. Um, so really, I think we should be trying to, to sort of lean into things like LiberaPay, Ko-fi, maybe Patreon, um, rather than sort of trying to solve that problem within the publication software because those features already exist and because that's already quite uh well established um having better interoperability between those tools um is probably the best way forward you know you just want to take the complexity away from the person listening it'd be nice if they had something like for example you're listening to a song you really like it so maybe you preload a certain amount of you know credits to your account if, every time you sort of play a song you really like, you can throw some credits their way. I don't know, the, the complexity of the actual <laughs> implementation is beyond me a little bit. As I say, I'm just a front-end guy. But um, I don't think there's that big a difference between them uh, from, from that sort of perspective. Um, yeah, uh, the servers were, uh, so open.audio is the main sort of flagship server. Um, and my server is called tanukitunes.com. Uh, I'll put that link in. Um, but there are lots of there are lots of servers, as I say. If you go to the actual funkwell.audio website, um, they're there. Um, so why should I, as a podcaster, decide against a centralized platform with lots of users for a decentralized one with only a few users? How can we dramatically increase the visibility of my project, now my product on Funkwell? Um, it's a good question. I mean, the the thing is with a centralized platform um, is you may be on a platform with a lot of users, but that doesn't mean that you're actually going to be seen by a lot of users. Um, there is a lot of stuff on Spotify which never gets played. Um, that that's just the the, the 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 fact of it. There are there are so many. There's so much content on there that you are just you know <laughs> you're just a grain of sand. Um, obviously, if you've got a, a sort of an established fan base and you've got a lot of people already listening to you, then that doesn't affect you. But in that case, it also wouldn't affect you if you were decentralized. Those same people would still be listening, and in fact, you would be able to reach more people. Um, podcasts uh, kind of allow for word of mouth in a way that something centralized doesn't. It can be passed around a lot more uh, sort of virally. Um, as for, you know, Funkwell, I mean, Funkwell's greatest strength is the Fediverse um, with this. Uh, so the fact that the audio can be shared between people's servers and sort of streamed directly from server to server, the fact that it can be followed on a multitude of different uh, platforms is where the visibility would come from. It's that sort of viral sharing. But the fact that it also works outside of Funkwell, it also works uh, just using a traditional sort of podcatcher, also plays into its favor. And that's where Spotify kind of falls apart. Um, yes, Spotify has a lot of users, but um, you do kind of cut off an entire core audience, which is the concern. Um, yeah, it, it's it's not a there's no simple answer to this is, is kind of the way it goes. But um, I feel like um, the point made earlier in the, in the chat, which was that if you centralize it and you lock it behind a wall garden, it's no longer really a podcast. It kind of, that kind of stands. It's not a podcast technically anymore. It's something different, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But it is true. It's no longer what it was originally supposed to be. Um, so, you know. It, it, it is best, I think, to try and make use of, uh, of you know, tools that fit into the existing podcast infrastructure.
Okay, that looks like all of the questions. I don't think anybody's calling in, which is fine. So with that being the case, if there's no more questions, um, thank you very much for listening to me ramble about, um, <laughs> about podcasts <laughs> for 40 minutes. Um, obviously, if, if you'd like to check the project out, it's just at, at funkwell.audio. Um, but also go out and support your favorite podcasters, whatever platform they're on. Um, you know, God knows they'd appreciate it, <laughs> especially in these times. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think that's where I'm going to call it quits. I think we have a phone call. Okay. Someone on the phone? Oh, uh, yeah. Hello? Hi. Hello. Oh, wait, am I live? Excuse me for that one. Uh, I just want whether you're familiar with a website called forgodify.com. You brought up earlier that there's like tons of audio that has never been heard of, and that's basically a site that sounds like a song or a piece of material on Spotify that has never been heard of before. Hmm. What was the name of the site again, sorry? Uh, Forgodify.com Oh no, I've not heard of that. That's quite interesting. So is it, it, it just yeah, plays like, stuff that doesn't get played much on Spotify? Yeah, you just like, click on a button and it literally shows you like a random song or a random piece of audio that has been like distributed on Spotify but never heard of before. I even heard some tracks from 2008 and 9, I'm not sure. That's great. <laughs> I really like. I really like that idea. Yeah, I, that that is a, a genuine concern. I I when I was um, I used to use Google Plus a lot because I'm that kind of person, and I was part of um, sort of publishing musicians uh, club. And I had people on there who published on Spotify, and they never got listened to. You know, it does take quite a lot for you to to actually get picked up by Spotify's algorithms and to be sort of uh, prioritized. So. I, it's not the best solution for podcasts. There's, I think there's a reason that only already popular podcasts are getting picked up for Spotify circulation. But, you know, that, that sort of project sounds really interesting because it'd be fascinating to see what gets forgotten down the sort of cracks of the seat, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. It's also very yeah. really thing to play the game of the algorithms and stuff. I think that's mm. like one of the main reasons why I'm making music myself in certain mm. online, personally. Mm. So that's why I look at the facts. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm not affiliated with the site. I just like found it very relevant and decided to share that. Thanks. Yeah. No. Thank you very much. That's really interesting. See you around. Thank you. Bye. Okay. If uh, we don't have any more calls, going once, going twice. Okay, okay, no well, more calls. Okay, thank you again for, for coming to, to watch, and I hope you have uh, a great rest of your conference. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun.